Captain Francis J. Dockery. I wanted to fly, but and I passed all the tests and so forth, but at the time it was going to be a six or seven year obligation and uh, at 21 and a half and 22 years old, seven years sounded like an eternity to me. So some of my friends were serving aircraft carriers and they sent back various uh, uh, inputs about what was going on out there. So I decided to not go to flight school initially. And so I went and served aboard USS Coral Sea, home port in Alameda, California, made two Westpac deployments. And uh, then I uh, did that and the aviation thing was still, still in the back of my head but uh, I, I got transferred to uh, Fleet Activity Sasebo, Japan, and, and ran the communications station there uh, for a year and a half. And lived in Japan in uh, 1962, uh, rather. And I, I then, a friend of mine who was also stationed there, <coughs> we decided that maybe what we ought to do really is get out of the Navy and go into business on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. So uh, <clears throat> I got out of the Navy, and uh, my parents were a little bit unhappy with that. And uh, my friend, uh, he got out a couple months after I did, and off we went to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. So our first uh, business venture was to get into the uh, wholesale fishing business, right? So we went to work on swordfish boats off the uh, Outer Banks with the local guys and so forth. So here we are, two Yankees, two college graduates, two ex naval officers work on these swordfish boats, the hardest, most dangerous work I've ever done in my life, right? Anyway, long story short, uh, a piece of property became available and uh, it turned out that my partner didn't have enough money to chip in on the, on the deal because it went from $2,500, a nice little piece of uh, waterfront, to $25,000 when they, we finally, they finally figured out what we were up to. We were going to be the competition for the only other buyer there, right? So anyway, so I went out there, we're cleaning the 600 pound swordfish while my partner's trying to figure out how he's going to get the money. These two F4s flew over, and I said, I think I'm out of here. So anyway, I got back, uh, back ashore and uh, got myself cleaned up, got a haircut, shaved, went up to uh, Naval Air Station in Norfolk and said, I'm back. So uh, I took the two tests again, the uh, flight out the two tests and the physical, passed them both. But this time they said, you need an age waiver for pilot training, but would you be interested in the Naval Flight Officer Program because most of the airplanes now have two seats in them and uh, blah, blah, blah. So I said, okay, I'll do that, which was somewhat of a mistake. If I didn't say that, that might have gotten the waiver, but I didn't get the waiver, so I ended up as a Naval Flight Officer. Long story short, that worked out great. Went to Vietnam twice, uh, VF-11 on the far stall, it blew up and all that excitement. And then uh, made, made a nine-month uh, deployment after that. I uh, went to shore duty as an instructor in uh, Fighter Squadron 101 in Key West, Florida. Uh, got married in 1968, and uh, then I uh, went back to a sea duty in uh, VF-31 as a maintenance officer, as lieutenant, lieutenant commander at the time, and we made a combat deployment in 72-73, flew 150 missions over Route Pack 6, and uh, at the end of that tour of duty I screened for command and uh, went to the Armed Forces Staff College for six months, transitioned to F-14 training and then uh, served as the commanding officer, XO, and commanding officer of uh, Fighter Squadron 14, uh, which is gonna have its 100th anniversary this coming October. So that was good, and uh, then from there I went to uh, Pentagon. I had, my, I had command of my squadron aboard the John F. Kennedy, and uh, uh, qualified as a command duty officer underway, uh, maneuvering the ship alongside others uh, for refueling, et cetera, anchoring, entering port, departing, so it was a good ship handling experience as well as you know, my, my flying duties. Uh, I left uh, VF-14 and went to the Pentagon, <clears throat> and I was the F-14 program requirements officer, <clears throat> not 506. And during that uh, first year there, I screened for another command, so I, I didn't spend the whole two years in the Pentagon. I went back to uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia, and took command of Fighter Squadron 101, which was the uh, F-14 training squadron. Did that for 18 months, and then went to uh, an intense, I'd screened for, uh, uh, XO of a carrier, and I had to go to uh, the, the out to Idaho where the nuclear power training is, and went through a, a seniors office, senior officer ship material readiness course, <clears throat> which all guys went to that went to either XO of a carrier or CO of a ship. So I did that, and then served as uh, XO of the John F. Kennedy, and uh, we had a wonderful uh, deployment that went through the Suez Canal, Northeast Arabian Sea, went to Australia, all kinds of interesting things. 
Uh, at the end of that tour, towards the end of it, I screened for command of my own ship, and I had command of USS Concord, which is an auxiliary uh, fast support ship, and uh, it was kind of like the giant supermarket Home Depot for the Sixth Fleet. And uh, it was a wonderful tour of duty, and uh, we were servicing, uh, I think at the time we had uh, 50 some odd ships uh, in, the, in the med. This was in the 80, <coughs> 83 to 85 time frame. Uh, when some things were cooking off over in Beirut and what have you. And uh, so that was a great tour of duty, enjoyed every minute of that, and uh, finished that tour, went to the staff at, uh, uh, at uh, Operation Test and Evaluation Force, and I screened for yet another command, and uh, I had command of uh, Service One Two up in uh, New Jersey, which uh, was a uh, we had uh, five uh, ammunition ships there that uh, would load up from the Earl Weapon Station and then, you know, deploy with uh, battle groups and service the battle groups and so forth around the world. So, a very interesting uh, tour of duty as well. I got involved with the New York Navy League. This was back in, uh, I was up there from 86 to 88. And uh, the guy that was head of the uh, New York Navy League asked me if he thought, uh, if I thought that uh, in a fleet week, in New York would be an interesting thing to do. He said, they used to have one years ago, but it stopped. And he said, uh, would, would I be willing to help him? And I said, yeah, that's a great idea. I'll be happy to help you. So uh, he said, well, he'd been talking to the guy over at the shipyard, and, the, and they said that maybe they could send a couple destroyers up from uh, Norfolk. I said, no, 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 you need an aircraft carrier. This is New York, right? He said, exactly. That's why, can you help me? So I called down to Vice Admiral Dick Dunleavy, who was Commander of Naval Air Forces Atlantic at the time, explained the story to him, and he said, oh yeah, great, I'll send the Kennedy up there, my old ship. So the Kennedy shows up for Fleet Week in 1987, and uh, they had 50,000 visitors a day, and the rest is history. So that was kind of a fun thing to get involved in, and uh, after that tour, I uh, went to the Pentagon, and uh, I was a deputy in Op 50, which puts together the plans and requirements for uh, naval aviation uh, budgets and so forth, and uh, did that for, um, uh, two years, I got my look for flag, uh, didn't make it, so I had two kids in grade school, oldest daughter in high school, and so I needed a new career, so I retired in 1990 and worked in aerospace for 15 years, and then I did a, uh, a, uh, a startup from one, one uh, consultant to uh, 18 employees by the time I finished in a, kind of a very interesting uh, recall mitigation for small arms, so I did that and uh, retired uh, when I turned 71. And uh, I got myself busy by running for the board of uh, the club I belong to, uh, Washington Golf and Country Club, one of the oldest country clubs in the country. And uh, ended up uh, being the project officer and built a $4 million fitness center, which was kind of fun along the way. And I served as president of the uh, club after that, which was kind of an honor and a privilege to do so. And uh, lived here in uh, North Arlington uh, with uh, my family and uh, uh, my wife and uh, three daughters, and it just, you know, a great run. Just turned 81, my youngest uh, granddaughter, she turned uh, six, and I turned 81. 